Time for another DIY BMS video and here I've got seven of the battery modules completed now. So by the end of this video I'd like to have one of these connected to a controller and I'd like to read the voltage of a lithium cell in my browser. So let's get cracking. Now I should really come clean here and say that actually this is the only module that has been completed of the seven. This is the only one here with this thermistor and I'm not entirely sure whether I want the thermistor on the front checking the temperature of this uh, discharge resistor or whether I'd like it on the back um, poking between my 18650s and checking the temperature of those. Now there is an argument to say that this thermistor and the resistors around it are not ideal for checking the actual cell temperature, um, but we'll probably leave that for another video. But I have to admit I have wasted a couple of hours this week trying to provision this module without that thermistor in, and it just wouldn't work, and then I realised why. Stuart has used pin 1 on the AT Tiny um, to uh, detect the temperature through a voltage divider which includes this thermistor. And pin 1 is the reset pin on the AT Tiny. So until the code actually starts running here, um, that pin needs to be high. It needs to be, well, as close to 3.3 volts as possible. If it's low, the chip just keeps resetting itself. And when this thermistor isn't in place, well, unfortunately, that pin is low. So the chip just keeps resetting itself. And like I said, that did catch me out for a couple of hours this week. Now, obviously, I need to get some code here on the AT Tiny, and Stuart has kindly provided an ISP header here, an in system programmer. So uh, these six pins here connect through to the AT Tiny, and I can use these to get the code onto that AT Tiny. And uh, well, let's do that now. Unfortunately, I don't have a USB ISP programmer, uh, but that's okay because I do have an Arduino. And we can upload a sketch onto this cloned Uno and then we can use it to program the AT Tiny. So what you can see in front of you is the Arduino IDE and uh, there is a webcam over my Arduino Uno there which currently just has the blink sketch on it but we're just about to make it into an ISP programmer. So uh, if we go to file and examples we can see Arduino ISP and open up that sketch now this sketch does show the pins that are required that sort of thing but in the top right hand corner of this video you can also see an arduino supplied image there showing uh, the programmer the uno and the system the target uh, that is to be programmed and you can see which uh, cables go where but i will go through that in a minute uh, but for now here we have the code arduino isp and uh, i'm sending it to a uno which is on com port 5 so i can just upload that sketch and that sketch should be sent and we can see the transmit and receive lights on my uno and uh, well that's it it's done now I've copied that image to the letter, hopefully fingers crossed, even with the same wire colours here. So pin 1 is orange and that connects through to digital pin 12 for example. So hopefully this is good to go to programme the AT Tiny. Hopefully my UNO and uh, the BMS module are connected correctly. And uh, I've opened up the Arduino BMS cell module software here, which I've downloaded from Stuart Pitaway's GitHub, which obviously I will link to below. But before we attempt to flash the AT Tiny, we need to copy this address here, which Stuart has handily supplied, and pop it into the preferences and board managers just here, which I've already done. So if we click OK, we can then go to Tools and Board Manager here in the board section, and we can find the AT Tiny. Um, I think it's this AT Tiny Core by Spence Cond. Um, and if we install the latest version, that gives us all the definitions we need to be able to uh, program the AT Tiny 85. Once that board manager package file is downloaded, we can choose tools again and board. And in this list, 
we find a bit further down the 80 tiny 85. And once again, Stuart gives us everything we need to do here. We're using AT Tiny. We need to use 8 MHz internal clock. LTO needs to be enabled. BOD disabled. And timer 1 is CPU. So let's go into here and pick the AT Tiny 85. We've already got uh, the CPU. Timer 1 clock is CPU. LTO, yeah, I've got that. And uh, we need that enabling, don't we? And then go back in. Was it enabled? Yes, it was. Um, BDO disabled. Yeah, 8 megahertz internal. So uh, first job here, we need to boot, uh, burn the bootloader uh, because from the factory, they come out 1 megahertz. Um, so let's burn the bootloader and set it up as an 8 megahertz chip. And uh, that's errored there. So uh, what problem are we having but i have had this before so if we press it again to burn the bootloader the lights are flashing on the arduino and uh, yeah it says there done burning bootloader so it worked although the first time it did fail now all we need to do is upload the sketch so we can use the upload button the uh, sketch will compile and then hopefully we should see some send and receive lights on the arduino uno and uh, the sketch should be sent to the AT Tiny 85 and the module should be, well, ready to go. And that's done uploading, so uh, theoretically that's all working. Now for the main controller for the DIY BMS, I want to use this, the Wemos D1 Mini. Uh, this is a clone, they're incredibly cheap on eBay. And this will use I squared C communication to talk to each module. And in fact, of course, it's isolated I squared C communication thanks to the Adam 1250 ARZ. And to connect these is fairly simple. First of all, we need, uh, well, 3.3 volts from the Wemos. And of course, we'll need the ground. Uh, D1 on the Wemos is the S clock, and D2 is the data, SDA. And if we look at the pins here from left to right, we've got ground, then we've got S clock, S data, and VCC. So we uh, need to connect these all up, and that's fairly straightforward, except for one thing which we need to add. And that's a couple of pull-up resistors because I squared C is an open drain system. So we need a resistor pulling up between 3.3 uh, .3 and uh, S clock here. And we also need one between 3.3 .3 and SDA, the data line. So uh, as long as we add a couple of resistors here, that should make the communication work because uh, the s clock and the s data can pull the uh, line down to ground but they can't pull it all the way up to 3.3 volts it just sort of sits floating in the middle when it's not pulled to ground so we need some uh, pull up resistors uh, to bring that up to 3.3 volts and for your reference i've chosen 2.2k as my pull up resistors to try and make this look as neat as possible, I've used the same connector as uh, Stuart used on the DIY BMS module uh, here on my little perf board, which is the same size as a D1 Mini. Uh, these are available, again, on eBay very cheaply. I've got my two pull-up resistors there, 3.3 volts ground and uh, D1 and D2 connected. And uh, although it isn't too neat, well, as soon as I put the Wemos D1 Mini on the top, well... It starts to look very neat, doesn't it? So I've connected up my Wemos D1 Mini via a micro USB cable to my laptop and I've opened up the Arduino ESP8266 BMS controller sketch which also um, opens up all these complementary files as well so uh, make sure they're visible. Now once again you may need to go to your preferences and uh, add in another uh, board manager URL here will make a new line and we'll add in this one. Hopefully this one will be suitable. Stuart hasn't actually suggested a preference here, so I'm going to add this one. And uh, I'll put a link in the description below to this same uh, library. 
And once we've put that URL in, we'll need to go back to our board manager and uh, let it update because now there's a new source. And if we search the top for Wemos, well, we can find it in here with this ESP8266 community library. With that install complete, we can see that Stuart has said that we need to make sure that this is set to 80 megahertz CPU and the flash needs to be 4M, 4 megabytes is that, and 3M spiff. So make sure we get that right. So let's find the board first in the board manager. Now we've installed it below all these 80 tinies um, and somewhere down here we can see the Wemos d1 r2 and mini so that's the one we need and then uh well debug level non 80 megahertz is selected uh we'll send the sketch only uh flash um four meg and three spiff so that should be ready to go my uh board is connected to com port 5 and uh well we should just be able to upload that sketch to the dwos dwos Wemos D1 Mini. Now the sketch has been uploaded to the Wemos and I've also now put an 18650 here on the module um, because of course this is powered by the 18650 and uh, not by the Wemos because of the isolation chip, the Adam 1250 ARZ. So uh, what happens next? Well, uh, if we go onto the Wi Fi here of my computer we can see the diy bms controller um, ssid is advertising itself so if we connect to that then we start connect my laptop directly to the wemos here now that i'm connected directly to the diy bms wi-fi i can put the address of my wemos which is 192.168.4.1 into my browser and it will ask me to uh, configure my normal home wi-fi network so i'm going to use this one my internet of things one and there's the password and i can submit that and after a reboot it will connect to my normal home wi-fi rather than display its own and transmit its own ssid and as it so happens my internal internet of things wi-fi also uses the 192.168.4 subnet but now it's been given a dhcp address of dot 46 so i've been able to go to that address um, because i found that information from my router and now we can see the uh, diy bms management console and if you remember right at the beginning of this video i just want to connect this one module and read a voltage so if we uh, click modules here um, well there are no modules whatsoever but if i click provision fingers crossed the light shines on the wemos d1 mini and it says it's requested a provision and uh well what do we do do we wait or do we reload the page and uh hopefully if we provision try again provisioning no let's go back to the main page go back to, aha we have provisioned one i just wasn't um patient enough there we go so id 24 that is the first id i believe so the next one i provision will be id 25 and it's reading a current voltage there of 4.221 well, that might not be absolutely perfect. In fact, I know that's a bit high, um, but there is a calibration thing in here, but that's not the point of this video. I wanted to get to this point. I wanted to connect a DIY BMS battery module to a controller and read a voltage in my browser. I've managed to do it. So I do hope this video has been of use to those of you who are looking to build your own DIY BMS. The code is still very much a work in progress, but I also know that Stuart is working hard behind the scenes updating it and adding new features. You may also be aware that Colin Hickey has forked the software and he's creating his own version where he's feeding the information from the DIY BMS into his Grafana installation. 
He's recently done a video talking about that and all the changes he's made and I'll place a link down below in the description. Hopefully you have enjoyed this video, if you did give me a thumbs up, subscribe down below, comment if you can and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.